Hey guys, Morgan Mex one here. I'm supposed to be doing Instagram Live with y'all, but Instagram is having issues and Live wasn't working. So, better yet, we're going to do a recorded version for y'all. They're going to post on their channels on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. So, first off, I'm Morgan Mex one Coastal Cantina. I'm excited to be making some cocktails with y'all today. Uh, Staying in front of my small tequila collection, huge tequila fan, obviously working at Mex one being mainly a Southern California take on fish tacos and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be one of my favorites. Uh, so, you know, I had a lot of questions I was going to ask the community out there, but I don't have a community, so we're going to have fun with it today. So let's start out. Uh, a little background about me. Uh, I started bartending and being in the mixology world about 15, 20 years ago at uh, the Tides Hotel on Father Beach. It was one of my first stops. Um, very high volume bar, so I got really accustomed to um, you know, meeting multiple customer demands. It was also kind of when the cocktail scene was coming up up and above. Uh, and then I got into Mex One Coastal Cantina from the ground up, um, helped come up with the margarita mix, um, those sort of, you know, the, all the tequila selection, the cocktails with uh, Dave Lorenz and my dad, Jack Hurley. Um, and here we are now, three or seven years later, three restaurants later. Um, so first off, I'm gonna make three different cocktails for you all today. Um, we're gonna go through a couple of my tequilas and a couple of my favorite books and tools that I like to use. So we'll kind of start out with that. So um, the first cocktail I'm gonna be making for you is kind of like a Paloma. I'm gonna call it the El Pandillo. Uh, I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, and also two different pre batch cocktails, a mango margarita and then a classic stirred cocktail as well, one of my favorites. Um, so to start out, a couple bar tools that I think are essential that people must have. Um, Huge fan of tin on tin style shaker. It creates a good seal, nice fun popping noise, also gets a really chilled cocktail really fast. Um, this guy here, juicer for grapefruits, lemons, stuff like that. I use, I squeeze lemons probably every single day for lemon water and stuff. Uh, a good sharp knife is another one that I suggest you must have. Uh, this one, it's kind of a sharp, fast knife. It's also got a little stick on the end there. Um, any sort of serrated knife is also clutch. Um, a good jigger or measuring tool. So you don't have to have a jigger. You can also use uh, like quarter cup, half cup, that sort of stuff. This one in particular I like because it has um, quarter ounce, half ounce, and one ounce lines, as well as third ounce, 0.75, and one ounce. That's those lines in here. So for exact cocktails, this is really clutch. Um, another great one is this guy right here, this is a funnel. This one is simple, but it works really well for pre-batch cocktails. If you're gonna bottle it back into another bottle, uh, makes it really easy to stir. Also infusions, those sort of things as well. Um, so I really suggest those. Um, another one of my favorites are either one of these two guys right here. So this one right here is gonna get you a nice peel off of an orange or a lemon for like a cocktail. But I also really love this one here. It's called a channeling tool. So the channeling tool will get that long string going from a grapefruit or an orange or something. What you can also do as well when you're peeling a fruit, you can, when you peel the fruit, the, the oils will actually come right off the tip right here. So you can actually direct that right into your cocktail. So it's a great way to get a nice essence on the front of the nose of the cocktail. Another one, classic bar tool, gotta have it. Pop tops for beers, stuff like that. Um, and then ironically enough, your power tool is another great one. I've had to do uh, coconuts batched for a lot of parties. And if you go to the store, you can buy this guy here, which is a coconut cracker. It's got a cracker here and a little thing you can poke a hole here, but this thing is a pain. If you're gonna pre-batch 50 or 100 coconuts and cut a hole in them, this thing is your best friend. Quick, fast, easy. All right, uh, a couple cocktail books that have inspired me. I think this is a big one for bartenders. I think we all have them. Uh, first one, Joy of Mixology, Gary Regan. Can't tell if this is backwards for you guys or not, but The Joy of Mixology by Gary Regan. He recently passed away, but this book was a massive part of my life. Um, just an all-around great book. Shake, stir, sip. When we get into batch cocktails later, this is 50, effortly cocktail, 50 effortlessly made cocktails in equal parts. So this one's great because it's really easy. 
How the Gringos Stole Tequila by Chantel Martinique, or Martineau, that's right. Um, awesome book, awesome book. Um, really gives you a di deep dive into tequila. Um, really easy to read. I actually did a presentation with her at Charleston Wine and Food a few years back. Um, so phenomenal book. <clears throat> Culinary Artistry. This is a great book because what it does is that it goes into ingredients. Like let's say you've got, you're working with um, oysters. It tells you all the different ingredients that work from onions, pancetta, paprika, parmesan, parsley, all from chefs all across the world. If you're working with papayas, avocados, cayenne, chicken, chilies, um, tells you the seasonality of the fruit, everything. So you pick one ingredient that tells you everything that can match with it. So from a cocktail or a culinary side, culinary artistry, phenomenal. What to drink with what to eat is a very similar style book. Let's say that you you just got a nice bottle of Cab from somebody. This will tell you all the things to drink with or to eat with it. Same thing vi vice versa. If you're going to go out and have you're gonna cook some nice lamb or something like that at the house. It gives you all of your options of what to drink with it. So another great book. But y'all tuned in for cocktails. So let's start with our first one. So this one, like I said, is called El Pandillo. So uh, Paloma is a classic cocktail that everybody knows. It's Mexico's number one cocktail. Uh, that's tequila, grapefruit, soda, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of grapefruit, and a little bit of salt. Salt is key. Um, Grapefruit soda is great, but grapefruit soda has a ton of sugar in it. San Pellegrino, squirt is what they use down in Mexico. Uh, it's all great, but sugar, as we know, is what causes your hangover the next day. It's what causes you to make you feel like shit the next day. So what I suggest is using Topo Chico or any sparkling mineral water, but I'm a huge fan of Topo Chico. So any like LaCroix, lime flavor, anything like that are huge. Um, so there's two different ways you can start with this. I've got fresh grapefruit. I always have one at the house. Um, I've got my trusty muddler here, or you can use the little juicer if you want to be quick and fast. So what I do is I took two chunks of grapefruit, put it in my glass right here. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to the cocktail. The one thing about the salt that's nice is that the salt will actually help break up a little bit of the oils um, in the rind of the glass or of the rind of the uh, fruit but as well it also can help kind of reduce some of the sweetness which is definitely needed if you're going to use squirt or some sort of pellegrino or anything like that um, it's not necessarily as needed as, an, as a big ingredient um, if you're using chipo chico so next we're going to use some tequila so what i would suggest is G4, this is G4 Blanco. Um, the distillery is El Pandillo. So that's why we call this cocktail El Pandillo. Um, we actually went down to visit these guys back in October, November of last year and toured their distillery. It's a phenomenal place. Uh, one of the best tequilas on the market, in my opinion. Um, we worked hard to get these guys into South Carolina. It took about a year, but we got them in. You can get this at like Bottles in Mount Pleasant. Or if you don't have, if you're not in South Carolina, then you know, really look for this one. This one's one of my favorites. Felipe Camarena is the master distiller and that guy's a genius. So we're gonna do one and a half to two ounces um, into your jigger. So one thing I will point out when you're making a cocktail is that I've seen this mistake happen a lot, is that people will put ice in their glass first and then they'll start adding in all of the other ingredients. Um, the reason I don't like that is, let's say you're doing exactly what I'm doing. You're making a cocktail, you've already got ice in it. As soon as you put ice in that glass, the ice is dying, your drink is dying, it's getting watered down. So I usually like to start with all of my ingredients first and then I do ice after that. Um, that way if you forget something, if you need to go run and grab something, which has happened to me a lot, I'll need to go up to the liquor cabinet up at work or something like that, or I get distracted, something comes up and I need to step away. I know my cocktail is safe, but if ice is in the glass first, time is ticking, you gotta get moving. So next we're going to pop the top off of this guy. Since this is a rather, rather easy cocktail, we don't have to worry too much about um, having ice in there because I'm gonna make it right here and I'm gonna drink it right now. So. Uh, got that going right there. I'm gonna grab some ice. Let me jump off camera really quick. So 
So next we're gonna take our Topo Chico and just top it off. That's the easy thing about this cocktail. It's one of the reasons why I love this cocktail so much is that all you need is a good bottle of tequila, some grapefruit on handy, and a 12 pack of Topo Chico or LaCroix or any other sort of sparkling water. Um, just gonna give that guy a quick stir like that. If you don't like all the pulp, you don't like all the grapefruit in there, then you can just use a juicer, um, just that little hand juicer, and just give it a quick squeeze and you'll be good to go. So I can't cheers anybody live right now, but I can cheers you here. Mm. Delicious, refreshing, which is the best part. The tequila complements the grapefruit really well. Um, soda water is phenomenal because there's not so much sugar. So you can have two or three of these and the next day wake up perfectly fine. Um, as well, if it really comes down to it, what I'll sometimes do is I'll drink a drink and then top it off with no soda water, no tequila, anything like that. If I'm looking to kind of pace myself, uh, it's a nice option to have. Um, yeah, so cheers to this cocktail. We're gonna move on to the next one, the mango margarita. So, some of you guys live here in Charleston, right? Um, if you do, Mex One is now pre-batching our margarita mix. Um, this whole corona pandemic, COVID-19, um, has really made us shift what we're doing nowadays. Um, so we are having to shift and go towards more online ordering, you know, making our mix to go, that sort of stuff. We are starting to open as of today. So we are starting to see that shift, but who knows what the shift is going to be. So that being said, we want to be able to offer our guests the experience when they get home. Um, so one of our seasonal margarita mixes right now is our mango margarita. So this is the mango margarita mix. I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay. This is something that I do at home. Uh, I may get a lot of, um, you know, nods from the the mixology world out there. This is not exactly the kosher thing to do, but I'm gonna do it because I think it's hilarious and it works well. So, I think a lot of us have one of these guys at the house. This is a protein shaker. It's got one of those little metal balls in it. This thing is perfect for pre-batching cocktails at home. Look, gyms are closed, so you're not going to work out right now. So, this is what we're gonna use in place. The other reason why I like this is that you can pre-batch the cocktail, stick it in the fridge, you got a cocktail ready to go, especially if you're entertaining. And as well, on the side here, it's kind of hard to see in y'all's world, but it has measurements. So it says four ounces, eight ounces, 12 ounces, which makes eyeballing it that much easier. So with cocktails, typically I like to shoot for about two to three parts of mixer to one part tequila. Um, so the benefit of this is that you can scale this up based on how many people you have. So if you have a quart of this, then you need a fourth of a quart for your tequila. So that being said, I've got this thing holds a total of 20 ounces. So if I shoot for that three to one, that gives me about six ounces of tequila that I can add in. So I'm going to add tequila. So first and foremost, Lunazul, it's one of my favorites. It's a great house tequila. Um, this is what we use at Mex One. It's 100% agave. That's the most important thing. You do never, never use a mixed dough tequila. That's 51% blue agave, 49% bullshit. So 100% agave is the most important. So we're gonna start out with Lunazul. And like I said, we're just gonna shoot for six ounces, depending on how strong of a cocktail you like. Um, you know, I forgot to mention with jiggers, if you don't have a jigger at home, a quarter cup is two ounces. So it's an easy one to remember if you don't have a jigger that you can use a quarter cup of that to a half cup or maybe three quarter of a cup for a cocktail at home. So we're going to take our mix. We always want to give it a quick shake. And then what I'm going to do is just go up to the line that I had mentioned, which is right about there. So that's about three parts to one. And then we're just gonna stick the lid back on this guy. The beauty of this as well, so it doesn't have ice in there. If you need, if you want to factor in dilution, you can add a little bit of water. Um, water for a stirred cocktail is about half ounce. Uh, if you're doing a shaken cocktail, it's about three quarter of an ounce is what you need to add water in. And then you can just pour this right over ice. But the beauty of this, the thing that I like the most is that little shaker tool right there does a great job of 
aerating the cocktail as well. So it does a good job of mixing, aerating, all that good stuff right in one. Um, so this is a fun one. Everybody usually has a protein shaker. Store this right in the fridge. If you have people come over, pour it for them. Good to go. Okay. Last but not least, well, let me take another sip of my cocktail, is a stirred cocktail. I'm sorry I keep going out of screen. This is a weird wide angle I'm having to do. So, you know, they say that people only watch about 60 to 90 seconds. I'm about 16 minutes in, so I'll be intrigued to see how many people watch the full thing. So, um, last cocktail, stirred cocktail. So, I usually like to shoot for some of the classics. I'm a huge tequila fan, so I like to sub in tequila where I can. Um, so, I'm going to shoot for a play on a Negroni. Uh, Negroni is gin, sweet vermouth, Campari, and a little bit of bitters. Um, very easy, can be equal parts. Some people prefer a little bit more gin. Um, so what I'm going to do is store this in a bottle, just like so. I chose a cool tequila bottle. So this is Tequila Ocho. It's a phenomenal tequila. You can really choose any cool bottle on your shelf, especially tequila bottles, they're really sweet. So I save them, pre-batch a cocktail. I'm gonna factor a little bit of water in here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of bottle of water and just pour it right into the bottle. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm shooting for about a fifth, maybe a sixth of the actual drink to be that. Uh, next, I'm gonna take one of my bitter liqueurs. So you can use Campari, you can use Aperol. This one is Martini and Rossi bitter. This one's really good. It's also a good price point too. So. The way I'm going to shoot for this is I'm going to shoot for about a third of the bitter, about a third of the vermouth, and then I'm going to do almost a third of tequila and then a little bit of mezcal just to make things interesting. So this is where that little rubber funnel comes in hand. Now you can measure this if you want, but you know I will say that with what you're doing, you can eyeball it and you're going to get pretty close. Um, you know, I've batched and scaled a lot of cocktails, and if you're, if it what looks like volume-wise, if you're off by just a little bit, it may be a tenth or a fifteenth, or maybe, maybe a twenty-fifth, a, a quarter of an ounce at tops. But you, you will likely not screw it up. It's amazing with batch cocktails how even just eyeballing it, you can come pretty, pretty close to nailing it right on the head. So I've added my vermouth in now. And then next I'm gonna grab a good tequila. Um, I usually like to shoot for Añejos um, or Repos. They're a little bit more expensive. I actually have an extra Añejo that I got down in Mexico that was a great price, um, San Mateus. Um, their Tejona is phenomenal. Um, this one was a great price, so I'm gonna use this guy here. Like I said, I'm shooting for about a third of the extra Añejo tequila but I am gonna save a little bit of room for some mezcal. Um, this is a, another great spot. If you wanna add in some uh, like cat head hoodoo chicory liqueur or some Sue's or some Benedictine or something for just that little bit of extra note to it, um, it's phenomenal. So last but not least, I'm gonna add in my mezcal. And there you have it, just like that. We have a phenomenal pre-batch cocktail right here that you just store in your fridge. Sorry, I cut off there. Store this in your fridge. You can store it in your freezer too. Uh, you gotta remember that uh, water does expand, so you may not wanna go all the way to the top. You're gonna see it in your freezer. Uh, this is also good with dry martinis too, if you're a huge martini fan. Um, lastly, I will not add uh, bitters to the cocktail because Bitters doesn't scale as well as um, you know the normal ingredients. So what I'll typically do is save the bitters for the very end. Um, since it is watered down, you don't necessarily need to stir it as well. I usually like to stir it a little bit just to get it cold, but you don't have to. Um, you know, other than that, uh, the that is it for today. Yeah, maybe next time I'll go over some of my tequilas. I have a lot of fun ones up here. I'll just pick it up and show you really quick. There's some really cool ones. That Cascoeen is phenomenal. Don Fulano, G4. The El Tesoro 80th. Ooh, that is good stuff right there. Codigo, 
Got that Patron extra you know. Got some good stuff there. Um, anyways, cheers. I wish we could have done this live. Could have answered some questions. Uh, maybe we can line this up with wine and food again. You never know. Had some fun with it. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, my name's Morgan Hurley. Once again, Mexico and Coastal Cantina. See that? Uh, hit me up, Mix Pour Surf, M I X P O U R Surf on Instagram. And uh, yeah, couldn't do it live, but I'll do it now. Cheers. <laughs>